Superpowers are cool and all, but if you ask Iron Man, gadgets are an equally essential part of any well-respected superhero's arsenal. So I thought I'd break down the coolest costumes and gear in My Hero Academia's Class 1A. Now we've seen plenty of flashy costumes, but no Class 1A student has a more effective costume than Deku. Deku designed his alpha costume as a child, and his mom then made the suit using everyday items like a jumpsuit, regular gloves, pads, a belt, a balaclava, a mother's love, and a respirator. It's as DIY as you can get. And the respirator's actually pretty cool, honestly, and budget-friendly. Inko picked it up from her local military supply store for about 5,000 yen? which I'm being told is $44. Okay, in total, his whole ensemble was valued at 40,380 yen, which converts to approximately $364, although looking at it, I couldn't tell you why it's even that expensive. After Deku's alpha costume is destroyed by Bakugo, he hires a professional hero support company to tailor costumes from that point on. Sorry, mom, but your boy's rich now. For his beta costume, Deku keeps the original aesthetic, but alters the jumpsuit to have a darker green with more padding on his legs. He also swaps out his original respirator for a sturdier metal one. More changes are made when Deku upgrades to his Gamma costume. Many of these changes are to support his new leg-centric shoot style. He adds arm braces, which help prevent One For All from further injuring his already damaged arms. He also adds iron soles to the bottom of his shoes to enhance his kicking power. They absorb the kinetic energy from his kick's impact and then redistribute the energy outward via a spring located in the sole of his shoes. And Deku does make one aesthetic change. He finally gets a new mask. It's a long time coming, but he does it. So Deku certainly has the most cost-effective cheap costume at UA, but Todoroki definitely wins the prize for coolest and hottest costume on campus. Depending on his current body temperature, Todoroki's costume fluctuates between hot and cold, which counteracts the negative effects of using his icy hot abilities. His iconic blue jacket monitors his body temperature using a sensor located slightly below his collar, which also works wonders to alleviate awkward cartoon moments. Ooh. The jacket works in conjunction with the other temperature regulating parts of his attire, namely his vest and wristbands. The vest features a radiator that either heats him up or cools him down on a moment's notice, and Todoroki's wristbands, which he adds shortly before the provisional license exam arc, adjusts his arm temperature to limit the physical damage done by his quirk. Hey, while you're at it, maybe like think about a hat or some glasses, something like that. I mean, your head is on fire a lot of the time. Just like a, a monocle. Maybe a monocle would be good. Todoroki has a few other practical things on his person, like pleated shoes to keep him from slipping on his own ice, and a belt that stores medical supplies like painkillers, disinfectants, and little vials of water, perfect for Adam Sandler-themed rescue missions. In case you were wondering, Deku and Todoroki's costumes were actually designed by the same person, hence the jumpsuits that account for arm damage, the belts, and the flippant disregard for face protection. In fact, there are many pairs in Class 1A that share a common designer, which we'll get into over the course of this video. Video. Deku's first outfit was technically designed by him, but beginning with his beta costume, Deku used a professional hero support company to produce new versions of his suit from nothing but grade A jumpsuit material, supporting jumpsuit farms all across America. I like to think Deku chose that company on a recommendation from Todoroki after they bonded during the sports festival, because we know the word of a good friend is better than any Yelp review. Most of Class 1A gets some sweet new gear during the provisional license exam arc, but I gotta give a special shout out to my boy, Denki Kaminari. Kaminari has always had an amazing, but kind of impractical quirk. His electricity doesn't discriminate between friend and foe, so anyone on his team could end up as collateral damage when the juice is let loose. Remember, during the unforeseen simulation joint arc, Momo has to cover herself in Jiro with an insulated blanket before Kaminari can even attack. I, I, I'm try I was trying to write like a, co a condom joke here, like a joke about using protection, but I, like, I, I just couldn't do it, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I'm not perfect. Thanks to the mechanical genius of Power Loader and Mei Hatsume, Kaminari upgrades to the pointer system. With his new gadget, Kaminari's quirk becomes much more reliable and less of a danger to his allies. The system is comprised of three items, his blue glasses, the pointers, and the sharpshooter itself, which is definitely just a dual disc, used to send opponents to the Shadow Realm, or less excitingly, to launch his collective pointers, which he stores in his belt. When he wants to use one, he loads a pointer into his launcher, which he aims using the heads-up display 
display on his glasses. Once fired, the circular pointers act as lightning rods for his electricity, allowing him to use his quirk with pinpoint accuracy, although it does require that Kaminari stay within 32 feet of the pointers. Kaminari also wears a special headset so that with just a bit of electricity, he can create radio waves, which allow him to access nearby communication networks at will. His headphones, which he had as far back as the USJ incident, were initially white, but changed to black when Kaminari donned his second costume. Next up, we have the 3.5 millimeter wonder, Jiro. In tune with her sound-based quirk, Jiro's support items are simple but effective. She has two sets of amplifiers, two amps on her arms and two on her legs, which allow her to weaponize the sound produced by her heartbeat, which is also how you could describe what K-pop bands like BTS are doing. It's as simple as plugging her earlobe jacks into the amps, using her quirk, and just like that, both amps can produce powerful sonic waves. We first see the Shin amps in action during the USJ arc. She later uses them to successfully counter-present Mike's voice quirk in her end of term exam. Both sets essentially do the same thing, but it's definitely easier to manipulate your hands than your shins unless you're Kylian Mbappe. If you're anything like me, you've definitely had the thought, hmm, Jiro and Kaminari both wear leather jackets. Their costumes sure do look alike. Now, first of all, get out of my head. Second, you might be excited to know that that's intentional. Yes, this is another pair who used the same costume designer, a designer whose trademark is a midlife crisis leather jacket. Does that come with matching Corvettes? All we need to make this next costume pop is a bit of Bakugo's sweat and just about anything he's wearing. No, this is not an intro to my fanfic yet. Let me clarify. As you may know, Bakugo's quirk allows him to create explosions at will. This happens because his body sweats out a nitroglycerin-like substance. And with some help from his support items, Bakugo is able to store his sweat in various removable parts of his costumes so anyone with the sweat-filled gear can use it. So how exactly does this work? Beneath his giant grenade-shaped bracers, Bakugo wears gloves with shock-resistant padding. His wrist is covered with an array of ports designed to harvest his sweat, and the harvested sweat then goes into a storage tank located on the base of his grenade bracer. And now that it's in the storage tank, Bakugo has a few options to choose from. First, he can place the stored sweat in a grenade shell located on his belt and hand it off to an ally to use as an improvised grenade, or just throw it himself, which he did during the fight against Seiji in the provisional license exam. Another option is to fire all the stored sweat simultaneously using a cannon-like feature on his bracer. An ally is able to fire the bracer as well, which we saw Deku do while the two of them were fighting All Might for their finals. But friendlies beware, Bakugo makes that bracer look simple, but it's got serious kick. Don't worry about misfires though. Bakugo is a very safe boy. The cannon feature requires two steps for its activation. The user first needs to slide the grenade handle back, and once that's done, they can then fire it by removing the pin. Bakugo's costume also features blunt weapons on his knees, which have yet to be used, but were created with, let's say, malicious intent. His support items also help him unlock his special move, the AP shot. He just has to make a circle with one hand to focus his explosions into a concentrated burst, a move that combines the laser focus of Sasuke's fire breath with the lack of coordination of Naruto's Rasengan. If our focus on killing and knees was too much for you, you'll be glad to know that it's time for Ochako to take center stage. Most of Ochako's gear is designed to mitigate nausea caused by using her quirk. Her helmet reduces stimulation on her inner ears, while her neck and wrist equipment massage her pressure points to prevent headaches, control blood pressure, and of course, avoid nausea, which honestly just sounds nice. You shouldn't have to have a quirk to get that. Why don't we all have that? Machaco's boots are the only thing she wears that aren't made to control her nausea. She uses them to reduce potential fall damage. There's a shock absorbing cushion underneath her toes and her heel area is protected by a reinforced spring. And you guessed it, Bakugo and Ochako's costumes share a designer. Although the only big giveaway is that the designer left a small signature on both costumes. You see those dots right in the middle of Ochako's chest? The same pair of dots can also be found on the top left strap of Bakugo's costume. Call it his producer tag, if you will. And it's a lot more subtle than making all of your customers look like the cast of Wild Hogs. Now that we've fulfilled our quota of costume designer pairings, we're gonna break down the costume of someone who doesn't share a designer with anyone in 1A, but whose suit is part of a long-standing family tradition of looking cool. Almost everyone in Ida's family shares similar powers and wears pretty much the same costume. But Ida's costume is a little different. Despite its bulky appearance, Ida's costume is actually very light, and most of his costume is functionally useless, much like Congress. It seems like Ida was going for form over function when designing his suit, but he justifies its flashy design as helping with wind resistance. Like, man, you can just want to look cool, that's fine. Two parts of Ida's outfit do come in handy, though. Those incredible 
inflatable pipes on his calves couldn't work nearly as efficiently on their own, and Ida's hero shoes feature a host of ways to boost his quirt, like cooling devices and other additions to enhance his running speed. But don't worry, he still has room for his exhaust pipes as well. Unlike the rest of his ensemble, his helmet does provide wind resistance, because let's face it, his brain needs to be on the scene a lot faster than the rest of his body. But for Ida, more than anything else, looking good is feeling good. When he's strutting around as the next Ingenium, dressing the part is what puts him in the zone. Now let's talk about support items. Like, I feel like I could use some, like as a comedian, I feel like I could use one where, like it takes the empty first row at a show and just moves those chairs to the back of the room. So now you've got a full first row and chairs for new people walking in. Or I could have one that just like makes money, like prints money so I don't have to do the show at all. That would be great. Or like nobody's talked about like emotional support items. I feel, but you know, if, if we did another video, what support items would you guys like to see that don't involve me reconciling my relationship with my family? I'm Yudoye, this is Getting the Robot, your anime explainer. If you like this video, think about subscribing. You know, it helps us.